Australia's defence spending is in a, quote, holding pattern and won't improve the nation's military capabilities for at least a decade. That's according to a new report by the Australian Strategic Policy Institute, which has warned that if war were to break out at any time in the next 10 years, our military would be forced to fight with the force it has today, which wouldn't be a problem if only China agreed to fight with the force it had, you know, 50 years ago. Joining me now is foreign editor at The Australian, Greg Sheridan. Greg, have we got 10 years to prepare for the possibility of war? No, we haven't, James. And this report is another damning indictment of the Albanese government's um, neglect and irresponsibility and dishonesty on defence. I've been saying this now for a year or so. Uh, the Albanese government came in with great rhetoric but no delivery. It's now well over two years into its uh, term and it's done nothing. Uh, it hasn't increased defence spending as it says it did. Um, it's still going on exactly the same funding lines as were outlined in the 2016 a defence document. It, um, uh, the, the tiny increase that it produced was gobbled up by inflation. Defence doesn't get its money compensated and in, uh, for inflation, and inflation was much higher than the budget papers forecast. Uh, the new increase in the forward estimates is piddling, it's nothing, and the 3.8 billion of it, the first, you know, two thirds or three quarters of it, doesn't come until the fourth year. That's four years from now. In the meantime, Labor is actually cutting back and destroying our defence capability. It's not going to modernise the Anzac frigates. It's already retired one frigate. It's about to retire another. It's now having great trouble keeping the Collins submarines in the water. It's not going to go ahead with the 4th Squadron of Joint Strike Fighters. It's not going to go ahead with a demining fleet. It's doing nothing about missile defence of our air bases up north. So on the first day of conflict, China could simply wipe out all of our air force uh, with selected missiles. In other words, it's doing nothing at all, absolutely nothing. And in fact, our defence capability is degrading, as numbers of defence uh, personnel have said. And uh, this is a bipartisan failure because the coalition was just as bad beforehand. And um, we are asleep at the wheel. We are the psychological equivalent of the Afghan national government. We just believe the Americans will always handle it. They'll always be here for us. They'll always win. And they'll always consider that their blood and treasure should be spent on our security. A terrible attitude. Yeah, well, Greg, hoping like hell nothing happens doesn't seem to be much of a defence strategy, and yet that seems to be where we are. I want to get on to some other issues, but just quickly, because you're all over this in terms of defence. Just quickly, what do you think Australia should be doing right now? If they were to take uh, the threat of uh, war with China seriously, what are some simple things the Australian government should immediately do, in your view? Two real simple things, James. First of all, if you're going to get nuclear submarines, you have to recognise that you're going to have to spend a lot more on defence. If you try to do it in your existing defence budget, you simply gobble up and destroy every other capability. So I support nuclear submarines, but don't get them unless you're willing to pay for them. If you're not willing to pay for them, better not to try to get them because you'll destroy everything else in the meantime. Secondly, we live, as everyone knows, except the leaders at Fort Fumble in Canberra, we live in the age of missiles and drones. We don't yet have a single armed drone. We're about to get one for the Army. The Navy has none. We don't have any significant quantity of missiles. We could make it very difficult for anyone to come anywhere near us if we had 30,000 missiles in northern Australia um, or all over the place so that they couldn't be concentrated and destroyed all at once. We've seen in Ukraine and elsewhere that drones are critical in naval establishments. The Ukrainians are destroying the Russian capital fleet with cheap drones. We make cheap drones in Australia. The Australian Defence Force, led by its Duke of Plaza Toros, who always fight the last battle but three, uh, won't buy them. Now, this is not rocket science. We could do all this tomorrow. We're rich enough. We, we know what we need to do but we're just going to keep on doing what we've always done. And I think, in fact, the defence establishment doesn't want us to have a war fighting capability so that we'll never do anything significant and it'll just be left to the Americans. They just trust that everything will be with the Americans. Well, all right. Well, speaking of America, obviously the conviction of Donald Trump continues to send shockwaves around the world. I really want to get quickly to this because you wrote about it uh, in The Australian at the weekend. Um, there's now questions, I guess, surrounding American democracy, society and the justice system as a whole. 
Uh, you wrote that half the United States now believes the judicial system has been wrongly weaponized for political purposes. How dangerous is that? And by that question, I, I don't mean the weaponization of the judicial system, but the fact that half the country believes that's what's happened. Oh, I think it's tremendously dangerous. So obviously, 99% of the time, the American judicial system is perfectly fine, independent, as just as it can be, uh, you know, people by good men and women who do their best. But the Americans have a terrible system where they often elect judges and elect district attorneys. The New York, the Manhattan district attorney ran on the platform that he would get Trump. Now, America, like many Western societies, has very, very complex overlapping laws which can be used against anybody for anything. This was a ridiculous charge, eight years old, a misdemeanor at best, misrecording a business expense, a trivial misdemeanor, the statute of limitations had run out on it. So the Democrat district attorney had to say it was actually done in pursuit of doing another felony and therefore it could be treated as a felony, yet he never specified what the other felony was. The judge seemed to favour the prosecution tremendously. The judge has himself donated money to Joe Biden. His daughter is a professional fundraiser for the Democrats. This stinks to high heaven. And even if through some miracle it was all virtuous, uh, half of America, which votes Republican, thinks this is crook. And a certain number of Democrats do too. Now, at the same time, Maureen Dowd in the New York Times has taken to calling the Supreme Court corrupt because three of the justices were nominated by Donald Trump. So what a terrible breakdown in, in the basic comedy of American society this is. Democrats won't trust Republican-appointed judges and Republicans won't trust Democrat-appointed judges or district's attorney. This is really a corrosive and very... This is a new turn and a very dangerous one in American political culture. Greg, I've, I've got to go to a break, but very quickly, does this change American politics forever or is this just a blip? I fear it might change American politics forever because uh, certainly if Trump gets into office, he will uh, do the same to the Democrats. And if Trump is prevented from getting into office by this ruse, then the Democrats will do it again to future Republicans. So, you know, America has a great capacity to rebound, a fantastic, regenerative, fabulous uh, rebound culture. But this is, I think, going to be a real problem in American political culture for a long time to come. Mm. Greg Sheridan, thanks so much for your time. Really appreciate it.